From what I've been able to piece together, their leadership ordered all ships to abandon Halo when they found the Flood, but they were too late. The Flood overwhelmed the Shimmer and disabled it. The Covenant are terrified the Flood will repair the ship and use it to escape from Halo. They sent in a strike team to neutralize the Flood and repair the ship for immediate departure. I've got a good lock on Captain Key's CNI transponder signal. He's alive, and the implants are intact. There's some interference from the cruiser's damaged reactor. I'll bring us in as close as I can. And, uh... Yeah, brings us in upside down. Good job, Cortana. Oh, I see. The coordinate data needs to be... Right. Sorry. Turn that volume down slightly. Captain? Captain? You see a little bit of a glance over there, Adam. Just slightly. This level's uh interesting. Oh, also, hi everyone! Welcome back to the to the uh, my pseudo let's play of Halo Combat Evolved. And uh, yeah, we are on the ninth mission of the game. <clears throat> and uh, there is the bane of your existence on Legendary, Shotgun Flood, able to obliterate you with a single shot. Analyzing damage. Yeah, uh, if you're in that spot and you stay there, Flood will continuously spawn and attack you, so... Not fun. Very hectic level. You've got Flood and Covenant fighting each other while also trying to kill you. And... Switching over the assault rifle for the pistol. Much better at actually killing Flood than the assault rifle, weirdly. Funny thing, actually, about the, uh, as we hear the cats running around, uh, is the assault rifle, I think I've mentioned this before, the, the assault rifle in this game does, like, 60% of the damage that it normally does against the Flood, so it does less damage. This is to make up for the fact that the Flood don't have energy shields, so they make the assault rifle not as effective against it. And the sniper rifle is just useless. Sniper rifle does almost no damage. Give me those shotgun rounds. Grief cats. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> Halo Infinite has been delayed, which shows you how long the time difference is between recordings. Yeah, Halo Infinite, it has been delayed. Which does make me a bit sad, but, you know, what can you do? On the one hand, I am sad that I won't be able to play it this fall, or, you know, whenever it releases, or whenever it was supposed to have released, but... On the other hand, it does mean that the game should hopefully be a much higher quality than it was previously. Because, yeah, I, I died there. The, um, to be quite frank, the showing, as the cats go haywire, the showing shown off at uh, Microsoft's event this, uh, earlier was not very it, it was kind of disappointing the crash did more damage than i suspected analyze coolant leakage rate is significant the ship's reactor should already have gone critical makes you wonder why the reactor hasn't gone critical then
Yeah, in this section, the uh, carrier farms spawn infinitely until you jump down, and then they stop spawning. Although you can mostly ignore the enemies, as I'm doing right here, because you don't actually need to fight them. I think I tried running through this area, but I don't think it works out very well. I don't quite recall. Not helped when I shotgun a, uh, yeah. <sighs> Death to all things. We should head this way, towards the ship's gravity lift. I do love the sound effect of the fuel rod cannon in this game. It's very punchy. Coolant leakage rate is significant. The ship's reactor should already have gone critical. I was eating some popcorn earlier and got some kernels stuck in my teeth. Yep, and then here comes the Flood Armada. Whew, chain explosions, man. They are deadly. God, the Halo 1 shotgun is amazing. But yeah, with uh, Halo Infinite being delayed till next year, uh, when exactly next year, we have no idea, but... Oh, it's getting blown up by carrier forms behind me. There they are. Oof. Halo 1 is just has all sorts of explosions that go on all over the place. A lot more than you would think, especially for a 2001 game. It's actually almost uh, GoldenEye levels of explosions, because like, in GoldenEye 007 for the N64, you shoot something long enough, it'll explode. Guarantee it. For the most part. It has been quite a long time since I played that game. I do actually have it. I have an N64, got GoldenEye. Uh, Mario 64. Ooh, damn it. Got shot by the flood. Oof. Run! <laughs> Obviously, it's much harder to fight through on the higher difficulties, but... Oh, there's an overshield over here. I forgot about that. That's our way back in. But yeah, um, infinite being delayed hopefully means that the game will be of much higher polish by the time it does actually release, and that will be worth the wait. Hopefully, hopefully we won't see any more of the uh, the you know the whole Craig brute memes that is uh, stuck with Halo Infinite ever since the. Uh, the reveal demo, which still looks a lot more like Halo 5 than, uh, sorry, looks a lot more like a proper Halo than Halo 5 did. So, in that front, it's still superior. Like, all else fails, even if Halo Infinite does launch and it still has some of the graphical issues that were shown in the demo, frankly, I won't really care because. It looks like it's going to play a lot more like Halo than Halo 5 did, which played a lot more high-speed thriller combat than traditional Halo. God, carrier forms suck. But yeah. In the corners, the flood are gathering bodies here. Run! God damn it. 
that happens. You shoot them and then they, like, death fire the shotgun Look, into you. The, the flood are gathering bodies here. There you go, skipping some of the flood co combat there. That was a terrible idea, why did I do that? <laughs> All the exploding flood and stuff. And I get killed by a plasma grenade. <laughs> but yeah, this is the final stretch of the game. Uh, obviously this is kind of a sort of retread of... Uh, the Truth and Reconciliation mission, which is because of limited time frame available to the dev team, unfortunately. I wonder what how Halo 1 would have turned out if they had had more time. Yeah, because like, as it is, this game turned out amazing, you know. Obviously it started an entire series, and I almost killed myself there. Nice. Great job, me. <laughs> but, um, I'm curious to see how a... how Halo 1 would have turned out if they had had, say, another six months of time to work on the game. Or even, to say, if they delayed the game until 2002. How would that have turned out? Nobody's really for sure, but it would have been interesting nonetheless. So an interesting thing, uh, one thing that's, uh, in this game, grenades, uh, they will only chain react explode if they are grenades that have spawned from bipeds, you know, specifically spawned from dead enemies, like that right there, that was a hell of a chain reaction. They will not uh, chain react explode if they are already spawned on the ground. Apparently in the original, like one of the earlier builds of the game, this was not the case, and grenades would detonate uh, quite easily. He's delirious. In pain, we have to find him. Captain Key's telling us to leave. Sadly not. I went the wrong way. But, um... Yeah, the, uh... It is interesting to think, though, how this ga how different this game would have been if they'd had more time. For one, we would have probably been able to see a lot more uh, unique levels instead of the last third of the game being uh, retreads, essentially. I don't know how different the final level would have been because I think I feel that the. Uh, Using the Pillar of Autumn to blow up the ring was very much kind of a, a set in stone sort of feature of the story. But, who knows, it may have been very different. We may have had a completely different ending to the game had they had more time to make the game. This section right here on Legendary is a bitch because they have, if I remember correctly, multiple... Uh, multiple rocket launcher equipped flood at this entrance on legendary here's all the uh, spec ops covenant fighting their way the captain his vitals are fading please chief hurry goodbye covenant. Run! Whew. Yeah, 
carrier forms are nasty in this game. They're just so damaging. And here's a... Uh, poor old Captain Keys. The glowing flood. Human life signs detected. The captain, he's one of them. We can't let the flood get off this ring. You know what he'd expect. <laughs> it's what much more gruesome in the uh, HD remake cutscene, and in the HD in the uh, the HD updated graphics, there's also like the faces of other Marines in the upper sections of it. To get back to the pillar of honor. Uh, pro strat, the uh, as soon as the cutscene ends, drop down here and hide. Because that position will be immediately rushed by flood. <laughs> oh, the flood is so silly looking sometimes. You can see how the the elite's head is slung over the back of its body because it's unnecessary to flood. Because the flood don't use your head for senses and stuff. They use, they use their sensing tentacles on the side. Or in the actual infection form, they have these little sensing tentacles that poke out of the chest. That's how they see the world. And this is when all of the Covenant make their appearance, and I tried to rush through, and that was a terrible idea. We need to get back to the <laughs> Let's go back to the shuttle bay and find a ride. Quick, run for the shuttle bay. <laughs> Those were the uh, Spec Ops units who are very tough to kill and they're very, very accurate with their guns for the most part. And are able to kill you very quickly if you're unprepared. Also, they have a lot more fuel rod grunts running around with fuel rods. Another pro strat for you. You know, assuming you don't die immediately. Wait for the Banshees to come in. Don't die to the Grunt. Um, <laughs> this is how you make the mi this mission pretty quick. Anyway, uh, yeah, wait for them to Perfect. come in, and then the just bag. immediately jump down. And hope you don't die. Anyway, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care.